Ms. President, I listened with interest to the statement of the Majority Leader with respect to David Hayes, and I agree with much of what he had to say. I feel compelled to correct some of the things that he had to say, because they are some of the same things that the Department of Interior has been saying that I find are, in fact, not factual. I agree with him that the President should be entitled to appoint whomever it is he wants. And I agree with him that David Hayes is qualified for this position. I also believe, however, Mr. President, that members of this body who have the responsibility of the confirmation <coughs> vote are entitled to clear answers to their questions before the confirmation goes down. And it is my opinion that we have been asking for clear answers to those questions, to legitimate questions, and that those answers have not been forthcoming. And therefore, I am not willing to proceed with a confirmation vote until we get those answers. This is not to say that I am opposed to David Hayes and will do everything to see to it that he is not confirmed. Indeed, I want to do everything I can to see that he is confirmed as rapidly as possible. But as rapidly as possible does not mean that I must give up my rights to clear answers to legitimate questions. Now, let me go to some of the items that the Majority Leader covered in his statement, because they are items that the Secretary of Interior has used, that others have used, that have been in press releases, that I believe need to be set straight. They are simply not factually true. Let's start out with the question of leases. Numbers. How many leases were put up and granted by the BLM in the last month of the Bush administration in the state of Utah? The answer to that question is 128, not 77, 128. All of those 128 leases were subject to exactly the same kind of procedure. All of them went through the same kind of review. All of them were handled by the same team of experts, career people within the department. And all of them ultimately were granted. The majority leader said this happened in the midnight hours of the Bush administration as if this whole thing were cobbled together in the last minute. In fact, much of the activity dealing with the granting of these leases occurred over a seven-year period. Why? Because all of the parties involved wanted to make sure that they complied with all of the rules. If it had been handled in a rush it through, get it done during our political circumstance sort of manner, they could have been granted in 2004 or 2007. It didn't have to wait until the last months of 2008. The reason it waited until the last months of 2008 was because they were so meticulously reviewed to make sure that they complied with every rule that it took that long. So let's get rid of the idea that this was a political decision on the part of the Bush administration. The record is very clear that it was not. All right. After the Obama administration took over, out of the 128 leases that were granted, suddenly 77 were withdrawn by the Secretary of Interior. Why? If there was a flaw in the way these leases were handled, the entire 128 should have been withdrawn because they were all handled in exactly the same manner. The 77 were withdrawn because an environmental group filed a lawsuit. The environmental group decided which leases should be challenged, not the Department of Interior. It was not a review by any career officer in the Department of Interior that said these leases are flawed. It was a political decision by an environmental group that said, we're going to file a lawsuit. And in response to that lawsuit, the Secretary of Interior said, I'm going to pull these 77 leases and then gave the same justification for his actions that the majority leader has given here on the floor today. That is, they're right next door to the national parks. 
and no one wants an oil rig next to a national park. Number one, most of the leases are natural gas. They're not oil rigs involved at all. And number two, they're not right next door to the national parks. Some of them are as far as 60 miles away. Let's look at a map and see where these leases are. On this map, Mr. President, the yellow are the national parks. This one is arches, and this one is canyonlands. The green are existing oil and gas leases, where oil and gas is now being produced. The red are the leases that were granted in the so-called midnight hours of the Bush administration. A quick glance at the, at the map makes it very clear that the leases that are being challenged as being right next door to a national park are surrounded by leases that are already producing that are closer to the national park than the leases that are being challenged. The facts simply aren't there to support the position that the Secretary of Interior has taken and that the majority leader has repeated here today. The majority leader has depended upon the secretary for his facts. The majority leader made a mistake in depending on the secretary because the secretary is wrong. That's one of the things that has caused me to raise this. What's the real motivation behind this? Because to say that the motivation is that they're too close to the national parks simply doesn't apply. Now, there are these leases right here in red that do not have any, lease, any existing leases between them and the national park but they do have a highway. If you're concerned about the national park experience being degraded by having leases where there may be some uh, natural gas activity going on, and that somehow that will destroy your experience in the national park, how about a highway destroying the experience in the national park? They're separated from the national park by a highway. Let's look at another set, another map. This one having to do with the Dinosaur National Monument. This is the one where the leases are 60 miles away. And yet the Secretary of Interior would have you believe they're right next door, that they abut the existing boundaries of National Park. Look at the green, which does in fact abut the boundaries of the Dinosaur National Monument, and no one has ever complained about that. This was a purely political decision based on the lawsuit filed by an environmental group rather than by any kind of review. So I have asked the Department of Interior, justify your actions. Appoint a team that will give us the information we really need and that will tell us why these 77 are different than the rest of the 128. This is the reaction, this is the response I have received from the Department of Interior to my questions. The first response came from David Hayes. It came on Department of Interior letterhead, and he signed it, David Hayes, Deputy Secretary, Designee. This is as an official and a statement as we're going to get, and this is what he says. In the letter, he said, if confirmed, David Hayes will have overall responsibility for undertaking the review of the 77 parcels that were withdrawn from the Utah sale, pending Mr. Hayes' confirmation. Not dependent upon, but pending Mr. Hayes' confirmation, the review team will consist of the Acting Secretary for Policy, Management, and Budget, the Acting Directors of the BLM and the National Park Service, and their designees. The Acting Solicitor, Art Gary, will provide legal support to the extent needed. In the letter where this team was named and laid out, the commitment was made that there would be a preliminary report to me by the 1st of May and that the entire matter would be resolved by the 29th of May. And when the 1st of May came along and we expected some kind of preliminary report from the department, Secretary Salazar said, we have done nothing and we can do nothing until David Hayes is confirmed. Directly contradicting the statement we have in writing 
over the signature of David Hayes. I think we are entitled to raise a question about this kind of procedure. The secretary, or the, the majority leader, talked about the real issue in this matter. The real issue in this matter is the credibility of the Department of Interior. If we're going to, to deal with the department in the coming four or eight years, whatever the electorate decides, we need to have some confidence that when the department sends us a document and makes a promise and names the specific people who will be involved in fulfilling that promise, that that will happen. Now, one final comment. The majority leader and the secretary have said this happened without consulting the National Park Service. On that, I have two points. Number one, it's a matter of law that the BLM is not required to consult with the National Park Service. They could have done this whole thing without talking to anybody in the National Park Service and been completely proper in terms of the law. They went beyond the requirements of the law and consulted with the Park Service to make sure that there was no interference with national parks. And here's what the career employees out in the field had to say about that kind of cooperation and, co and coordination. Quote, I would like to personally extend my appreciation to the BLM field office managers who worked with the Park Service on the parcel by parcel review of these oil and gas lease parcels. They did an outstanding job working in collaboration with us. And secondly, we will provide for the, the record the names of those who made these quotes. Working with Selma Sierra, the BLM Utah State Director, has resulted in the kind of resource protection that Americans want and deserve for their national parks. We didn't consult with the national parks. We didn't discuss, I, we is the wrong term. The BLM did not discuss this with the national parks. When the National Park Service makes statement of this kind for the record, I repeat, Mr. President, the problem here has to do with the credibility of the Department of Interior. They have made a series of statements that are not true. They say these leases are too close to the national parks. 60 miles away is not too close. They say there was no consult consultation with the National Park Service. The National Park Service is on record as saying it's done. They made a promise on official letterhead by the Department of, uh, from the Department of Interior that a team would be appointed and a date would be met. The team was not appointed and the date has not been met. I am perfectly willing to vote for the confirmation of David Hayes as soon as the Department of Interior lives up to the promises that they've made and acknowledges that the statements they've made about these leases are factually incorrect. It's not a matter of interpretation. It's not a matter of opinion. The maps are here. The documents are here. The statements are here. Let's have an honest discussion of it. And when that discussion is taken care of and the commitment made by Mr. Hayes on Department of Interior letterhead is met, I will be happy to remove my hold and vote for his confirmation and urge all of my colleagues on this side of the aisle to do the same. That is the issue with which we are faced.